we will be treating the Codemaster Studios as an independent group for the foreseeable future. That is a top line quote from someone at EA when talking and asked about their influence over Codemasters and the F1 game franchise specifically for this next year and the coming few years. That quote and the rest of that interview, which was by the way the very first interview anyone from EA has ever done about buying Codemasters and what it might mean specifically for the F1 franchise. This entire article and interview done recently on the Daily Mirror is the reason why I am now tentatively quite positive and a little bit happier maybe and at ease is the word I think at ease about maybe the initial impact that EA is going to have on the F1 game franchise and that's what we're going to be talking about today because I think we've we've talked a lot about our worries you know the the negatives maybe we did talk about some positives maybe with game ideas but this is now really looking at actual stuff that EA is talking about when it comes to Codemasters and the F1 franchise so like I said in general this video is again once again about EA buying Codemasters but that deal has now finally fully gone through and it means we're getting interviews like this recently done in the Daily Mirror from actual people at EA for the first time ever they're actually talking about the F1 game it's not just speculation from where we feel they're going so this interview was done by the SVP of the third party content development at EA and it was an exclusive interview with the Daily Mirror and had some really juicy quotes and some insight to maybe where the F1 game franchise is headed or where or how EA is going to treat Codemasters as a studio, as an entity, and then also the actual franchise of F1 itself and the other ones that they take care of as well. Before I delve into that article and give my reaction to these quotes from the guy at EA, definitely check out the full article for yourself, guys. I'll link it down below in the description or in the comments below. It was written by Nathan Bliss, uh, who is a gaming and esports journalist, and I actually had the pleasure of going on one of his podcasts that he hosts last year during lockdown one. We talked about myself and stuff, so I'll link that below as well uh, because it's a really great interview. Interview. It finally gives some insight. And like I said, it's actually an exclusive interview. So this is the very first time anyone really from EA has actually fully said anything about the F1 game and mentioned it. But apart from obviously like the main spiel they gave when they when the deal went through, when EA officially bought them, obviously they gave like some spiel about what it means for the two companies. But this is the first time we're specifically now getting someone to ask someone at EA about the F1 game and what it means to have EA's potential influence over it with that umbrella they have now over Codemasters, one of their, you know, Studios under the under under their arm. So to the question, how much influence will EA have in terms of development of the of the game? So F1 2021, or will Codemasters still retain complete control over development? Of course, we kind of know F1 2021. That's pretty much already you know uh, half the way there, two thirds of the way there. EA won't have any sort of influence potentially, maybe apart from some tiny little things to do with the podium pass. We reckon maybe, but this is what this uh, SVP of the third party content development at EA had to say. We'll be treating the Codemasters studios as an independent group for the foreseeable future whilst giving them all the support they need to deliver their much loved games and exploring all opportunities for growth as we go so I tweeted about this at the time when the article first came out and Nathan actually told me about the, the interview he did and uh, that is that that quote that that right there is exactly what I wanted to hear to have my mind at kind of at ease now obviously I know People like this from EA, they can say a lot of things and EA and people at EA have said a lot of things in the past of this kind of nature when it comes to other studios and other games they've had. And or obviously, you know, talk is cheap. It's really about what you do. And obviously, we could just have to see how it goes. But in terms of this vibe that continues on through the entire article, by the way, in terms of how they're, how they're treating it, if they are really going to treat Codemasters like its own independent thing, like basically like, okay, cool, we bought you, but you just go, you know, do your thing over there. We're over here with our actual games that we build in-house and stuff like that. You're over there. You're making that game. And if you need some budget, if you need resources, this or that, yeah, sure, we'll write you a check or whatever, here you go, and you can go develop it. It, it. That's the vibe we're getting from here, and that's exactly what, at least I personally want. Like, I've seen a few people say they did want EA to obviously step in a bit with certain aspects of the F1 game they maybe don't like, but for me personally, I think Codemasters are banging it. I think they're on the perfect trajectory in terms of where the game is going, especially for things like my team in career mode, for, which is still the majority of what the player base plays these days in the F1 game, so after 10 years, is, that's still the majority of the reason why players play the game. Uh, and my team, it, you know, the, the, the addition we got for last year 
it's uh, it was a massive step, massive, massive step in terms of red tape. But think of the previous years, you know, driver transfers in F1 2019. They are making the right steps, and I just want them to continue on this path that they're set out on. Clearly, the vision they've got, with help from I think I feel like us as a community has helped out in the last few years because there's been so many game ideas that we've said on this channel even, and like other creators have said in their videos and respectively on Twitter and whatnot that we've said over the last five years, and they've ended up be becoming features of the F1 game so I think it's a, it's a massive kudos to to Cody's and the community for keep on you know wanting to try and improve the game and they have been doing so that's why I want what I want from EA is just that for them to just give them the support budget to hire more staff open up new studios they need to make the game even bigger you know because there's only maybe a certain amount of things that the developers can do at Cody's uh, with what they've got the resources the, the manpower they've got in terms of like my team so maybe this opens up for a whole nother double layer of development what they can do if they are given the resources for it so that's uh, initially is the first question that's really promising and that eased my mind as a you know if that obviously again pinch of salt but if that is the case that is a really good sign for for everyone involved in terms of looking at and playing the f1 game he goes on to say we're incredibly excited about what the future holds for them and while they will remain independent we will be there to pour fuel on their growth capabilities Literally what I just said. That's exactly what we want from EA and Cody's now in this new, you know, going forward now. Because it's a done deal. There's no going back. It's done. So Cody's are now owned by uh, EA. There's nothing you can do. So in terms of now what we want to see from it, that's exactly what at least I personally want to see. As much as, you know, this is great. That's what we want to hear. You know there's a guarantee that this fuel on their growth capabilities will come at a price of there probably will be more, more microtransactions to do with the podium pass and probably development of that area of the game I just hope it doesn't bleed into online to the point where what they've done with FIFA and we've said this before it's kind of a broken record at this point but what happened with FIFA was you know they started doing all these microtransaction things with Ultimate Team in online which fair, no, no doubt improved the online of FIFA but what it did was it meant that they turned their attention all to online just because of the revenue stream and basically forgot about career mode uh, and, and that's what I'm worried about and it's not like you know it's not like I don't want the online part of the F1 game to grow because I like seeing F1 esports grow. I like seeing that side of the game grow. Even though I don't play it, it's cool to see that grow. But at the same time, like I said, the majority of the player base that buys the F1 game year on year still is buying it for, for, for career mode, for my team. So I don't want them to suddenly, you know, open these revenue streams and online. And yeah, the online improves massively, but then they start to just move their attention over to it and forget about career because it doesn't make them as much money long term over the year because obviously if you buy it for career mode that's it you buy it that's your sale from one player for the whole year whereas if you bought it for online and you start paying over you know every month for different things on online that's more revenue you're getting off one player versus the guy just playing career mode so that's the only massive issue that I'm still to this day going to be worried about until we actually see what's happening but this this does ease my mind a bit that initially maybe just for the f first few two three years that maybe there's going to be a little bit of just, you know, Cody, do your thing, and here's some more budget. Another thing I will bring up was when the deal went through uh, a couple of weeks ago now, I think mid-Feb, when EA f officially, officially bought Codemasters, I did tweet my worries at the time when I was a bit more worried, and there was some interesting takes on it, and one reply I got from someone who works at Codemasters, a game programmer at Codemasters, said, stay optimistic, because I, I, I've always said, I like to remain optimistic. Every year when the new game comes out, and we're getting new news and new game play I forget about all the negatives that I thought about the previous game because I want to get excited about the next game so I've always been quite opt optimistic person I just feel like I'm a little bit worried for good reason with this whole acquisition but a uh, game programmer from Codemasters uh, David Burney uh, stay optimistic we are the same team who want F1 to be as good as it can be and EA will help us so this is coming from someone in Codemasters so he's not just going to say that willy nilly like it's not his job to be a PR person for Codemasters that's you know, the community manager and all the marketing team's job. He's a game programmer. He makes the game. He's making the game. So it's his, you know, him and his team's, you know, your blood and sweat to make the game that we're playing and we all love. So I don't think he would just say it willy-nilly. Uh, so from his perspective, for him to say that, uh, that's positive. You know, if, if, if they're looking at EA buying them as a company and you're an employee working on this game, you love the F1 franchise, you want to see it do well, you see EA coming in and you're saying, you know, I'm still remaining optimistic. Uh, we all want to make the best F1 game, yeah? And they 
will genuinely help us do that, then I, I'm inclined to believe him because, as I said, it, it, he's, a, he's a game programmer at Codemasters, so it's not his job to spin the PR wheel because his job is to make the actual game. So there's no need for him to uh, try and, you know, be a PR person on Twitter and try and blow out a fire of, of oh, what would happen with EA and Codemasters. So that's another tie in to this article that makes me positive about about that that takeover we continue on with the article and i've said this before one thing that you can guarantee that's a definite positive with ea buying codemasters is that ea know how to market and how to grow a game to casual fans and casual player bases and that's what the f1 game needs as much as we also need you know things like my team to continue for the hard cause to really develop that and the people that love career mode and at the same time they need to develop online and f1 esports they also need to just help codemasters to develop a strategy of how you get even more casual F1 players or non-F1 fans to play the F1 game for the first time and get them hooked because that makes it a bigger game, a bigger community, and that just helps the game itself grow in terms of if the community is bigger, more people are buying the game, that means that Cody's and EA then can continue to grow and invest the game and therefore the game gets better and better year on year, you would hope. Obviously, that's a lot of wishful thinking, but this is this is another thing that I want EA to, to I think EA can do, and this is the question Will EA be able to help the popular F1 game series become even more popular, considering their EA, uh, considering their EA speciality with sports titles, and how? The answer to that was: We know there's a huge market for racing games, and we believe it's one that sig has significant room for growth and potential. We've long admired Co-Masters and their development and creative uh, capabilities, and innovation are world class. Bringing their skills and expertise with our own could revolutionize the genre. The passion and drive of our two groups to deliver amazing racing games with combined technical abilities strength in arcade racing simulation and narratives makes for a heady mix for any petrol head so he's not just talking about f1 there he's talking about also dirt grids all those kind of things and also the obviously the racing titles that ea already has like need for speed for example but he's putting them all together but that that kind of says it all that ea are wanting to it looks like initially at least obviously as i said things can happen down the line but initially ea it seems like they're gonna let them do their thing and what they want to specifically work on with Cody's is combining those abilities to maybe make new IPs or improve the IPs that Cody's have that maybe not F1 or to improve F1 in a way where it makes it even more popular, revolutionize the genre with technology. You know, there's tech that EA have that they use in their sports games that could definitely boost the, the F1 game in terms of like the way maybe databases work, the way like, you know, the live service works, you know, could we finally get like patches every month for the F1 game that genuinely make a difference uh, in terms of like proper driver stats changing week to week, maybe even from the Grand Prix and stuff like that. You know, EA has the resources to maybe go out there and build those databases and keep patching the game constantly to give updates like they do in FIFA and Madden, for example. Um, so that that's also quite promising, I would say. And my final takeaway from this article there are more questions so like i said definitely go check out the article for yourself if you want to read the whole thing but this last question i'm going to dive into is will codemasters have a bigger development budget due to ea's takeover the answer was while i can't comment on specific development budgets i can say that the union brings opportunities for codemasters to benefit from access to our ea functions and resources to help further grow its amazing racing tiles as I just said, EA functions and resources, access to those. So, and that's kind of almost saying yes, uh, that's saying yes, but without saying yes also, by the way, to the budget question. It's basically, yeah, there will be some budget. Maybe initially it's not going to be actual budget of money. It'll be more, you can use our resources, our things that we've got. And then down the line, if it works out, then you can start actually having some, you know, cold actual budget uh, pumped in towards that studio. But, you know, again, that specific thing, access to our EA functions and resources to help further grow it. Like I said, there are so many different things that EA games do have that are great, that they do well, and that the F1 game would benefit from. Obviously, the only thing is and you know even with all of this positivity maybe and at easing for myself personally from the, especially that first quote there's still going to be there's always going to be some ne negatives that come from getting access to those resources i.e you do know that ea will want to see a profit back on it will want to maybe help cody's open up that revenue stream for online with microtransactions uh it's just to hope that they maybe stay away from it and don't go aggressively 
into it as maybe uh, some of us are fearing, I think, is the, is the way to go about it. Uh, it's going to happen eventually. Like, you just know that it's going to come into the game. But, uh, and as much as everyone's memeing it, it probably won't come in as hard as people, you know, because people are making jokes that you're going to have to pay £10 to, to do this Grand Prix or £10 to, to fit the hard tires on. Like, obviously, it's, well, it's all well and fine making jokes like that, but I don't think it's seriously going to ever get to that stupid level. But obviously, you do know, with the podium pass already, Codemasters away from EA has already tried to make more revenue but interviews like this do give me a bit more hope and that's why i wanted to bring to you guys so if you guys did enjoy the video and the concept of just kind of bring that uh, that news to you then be sure to hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you are new around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye